Don't ever underestimate someone who has lost everything. Because when they get back up, they will be unstoppable. You're in my domain. Gentlemen, is recognized. 19 kids are dead. 19 children are dead. And so to my Republican colleagues, I ask, who are you here for? Are you here for our kids or are you here for the killers? Because if you were here for the kids, you would do all you could to protect the next school shooting that's about to happen. And we know what's going to happen in America. You would vote to raise the age on purchasing an assault rifle. You would vote to ban high capacity magazines. You would vote to require safe storage. And you would vote to address ghost guns, which are ravaging communities across America. But if you're here for the killers, you would do everything to make it easier for the next school shooting to happen. And Mr. Jordan, to say we are trying to dramatically change the country, dramatically change the country, if trying to make sure that no more kids are put in the ground with a Superman coffin means dramatically change the country, guilty. That's why we're here. Kids are going in the ground today. And you call that trying to dramatically change the country. Why aren't you trying to dramatically change the number of dead kids going into the ground, Mr. Jordan? Who are you here for, the kids or the killers? My Republican colleagues are here for carnival games. They say it's about mental health. Okay, we try and fund mental health, they vote against it. They say it's about schools. We try and fund the schools, fund the teachers. They vote against it. They say it's about policing. $300 million in the American Rescue Plan for community policing. They all voted against it. And they don't want to listen to the police. If they listen to the police, they'd listen to the major cities' chiefs who have called for background checks, red flag laws, banning bump stocks, and banning high-capacity magazines. My favorite, it's about the family. We need to address the family issues in America. But we don't want to help feed a family. We're going to make it harder for kids to live on food stamps. We don't want to help a family learn. We're going to go after teachers in America. We don't want to help kids go to college. We don't want to give them jobs. We're going to vote against the infrastructure and jobs bill. And then they say that laws don't work. But they have no problem crafting laws to take away a woman's right to make her own health care decision. That law must work. They have no problem going after laws to ban drugs. There's plenty of laws on the books to ban drugs. But no, it's all about the person. Laws don't work when you have evil in our country. That's what they tell us. And then they tell us that we're in a country where you have violent video games, mental health problems, schools that can't be secured, and too many gun-free zones. And their solution to that is to put more of the most dangerous weapons into that mix. That's insane. They're also out of touch with the overwhelming majority of gun owners in America. An organization called 97% just put out a poll that said among gun owners, and they only polled gun owners, 86% support background checks, 76% support safe storage, 67% support red flag laws. Those are gun owners. So who are you here for? Our kids or the killers? I'm here for people like Alex Navarro. She's a Moms Demand Action Leader in the San Francisco Bay Area. And last week, after I convened a meeting among my constituents and people like Fred Guttenberg and Dr. Joe Sacrin, an emergency room physician, at Johns Hopkins, Alex Navarro told my constituents that her six-year-old daughter, after Uvalde, after seeing the images behind me, said to her, Mom, what picture are you going to use for me? What picture are you going to use for me? That's what children are asking their parents across America, because they don't believe they're going to come out alive. What picture are you going to use for me? We're supposed to be the protectors. We're supposed to be here for the kids. And so to my colleagues today who flew in town, came to work, got ready to argue, my question is, why did you come here for, at all? Why did you come here at all? If you're not here for the children, why don't you go to the funeral of the killer? Because that's the only place where the killer is being celebrated. We're here to get things done and protect our kids. What's your job? I yield back.
Gentleman yields back for our purposes. Mr. Government seek recognition. Back the last word. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't think uh, that it's very effective for the children to have people on the other side of the aisle come in and accuse Republicans of being complicit in murder and that we put our right to kill over others' right to live to infer by rhetorical supposed questions, who are you here for? We must be here for the gunman is an outrage. How dare you? You think we don't have hearts? It's just that when we look at the things that you're doing and you're trying to do to America, we've seen the carnage. I mean, for heaven's sake, let's, let's take example. Democrats control the major cities that have the worst murder rates. That's right. Your ideas have been shown to get people killed. Are you here for the murders, the murderers in Chicago, in Philadelphia, in these other major cities? Because you're wanting to do nationally what is being done by Democrats in those big cities. We care about people. We care about their lives. And lives have been so trivialized. We care deeply. How dare you? How dare you? You arrogant people attributing murder to those of us that want to do things to stop it because we've seen what your ideas do. They create more murder. Okay, let's look. Rochester, New York. The, these are cities that set the all-time high homicide rates in 2021. Is, this is what you're shooting for, apparently, figuratively speaking. Rochester, New York. Uh, they had a record homicide rate of 80. Not that big of a city. Philadelphia, 524 last year. Uh, and by the way, all of these are, are Democrat mayors. Louisville, Kentucky hit a homicide, high homicide rate. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Austin, Texas, Indianapolis, St. Paul, Portland, Albuquerque, Tucson, Columbus, Jackson, Mississippi, Atlanta, New Haven, those were all Democrat ideas. They control. They've done so many of the things that Democrats in this committee want to do. We're not alleging you don't care. We're just telling you that your ideas have gotten people killed, not saved lives, for heaven's sake. And then you want to be arrogant and accuse us of murder and of not caring? We care. And if, if you could just possibly get off any kind of arrogant stepladder that allows you to look down on us and look back historically. Thomas Jefferson was not at the Constitutional Convention, but, but he said in a letter, if I could change one thing, it would be to require bills to be on file for a year before they're voted on because he understood the mistakes that are made when you rush and make big decisions out of emotion. That's what we're trying to prevent so that we can save lives and keep people from being killed. For heaven's sake, I, I, I think back historically, we had a president in Franklin Roosevelt that on D-Day led the country in a six to eight minute prayer for our troops. And now we had a president come on after Uvalde and, and he used God's name in vain. Most of us would consider it. It was used as an interjection, not as a source from whom to beg for wisdom like this country did for most of our history. Since the 60s, we really started having these mass shootings. Perhaps there was something in the 60s, maybe some Supreme Court decisions that gave rise to people being taught in school. It's whatever you think feels good. Well, 
it's time to get common sense back and to look historically about where people are being murdered in record rates and don't repeat that like the Democrats are trying to do. Let's do common sense. <laughs>